Hello. Good morning. Afternoon. Good afternoon. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> We're on lesson 46. God is the love in which I forgive. Mm. So we're, we're heading into a new, a very important area. Sis, do you want to unpack it a little bit? Yeah, I might just do our own little brief introduction here just to give some right. uh, supporting material for the lesson to really land. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, remembering the ego has a central wish, right? Mm -hmm. And that that central wish is, is the wish to be unfairly treated. But when we look at the um, ego iceberg diagram that we've mm -hmm. you know, revealed a couple of times now, I don't know if you've got it there, sis. I do. You know what, and as I bring this up, sis, can you yeah. explain just why, because I don't remember ever bringing this up, although I know a lot of course students already know this, but for those that might not, why does the ego, why is the ego's central wish, the desire to be unfairly treated? I mean, we've talked about projection, but do you want to tie that in for those who may be new? Okay, so as you can see, well, can you make that iceberg yes. diagram just so we can see that 90% okay. or more of it is submerged. That's a different diagram. I wonder where the hell that came from. <laughs> that's okay. Fine. That's that's the earlier drawing of it. It's not the one that's published in the book, but that's okay. Um, I love the skull right at the bottom in the heart. I Isn't that so cute? It's very it draws cute. off alignment, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what the as you can see, ninety percent roughly, of the ego thought system is deeply submerged in our unconscious. And it wants it to stay there because in that unconscious is its secret wish to be unfairly treated because then it gets to offload, in other words, project all of its secret guilt, which is attack. It gets to project it outward so it gets to project it on other people, blame other people. Um, it gets to project it on the world, on the past, on the body as sickness, pain, accidents, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and then, of course, it, it tricks us into believing that, you know, all of the attack is coming from outside of us, right? Um, and, and we get stuck in this loop of trying to fix everything at the effect level, not even recognizing that there's just one cause in our mind, mm -hmm. yeah, which is the ego's desire to be unfairly treated. Now, what, what forgiveness is, and we're talking about quantum forgiveness, we're not talking about ego's forgiveness, we'll talk about that later. Quantum forgiveness is the recognition that the source of all our triggers, regardless of what they are and who they're in, seem to be in, um, is in our own mind. If we're triggered, we're triggered in our own mind. And it's beautiful. The fact is that that's the only place in our own mind that we can actually forgive. So we don't actually forgive other people. We don't, we don't, we don't, Forgive, like for me, I had an abusive childhood and um, I found it very, very difficult to forgive my mother. Even when I began the course, I tried for years to forgive my mother mm -hmm. and not recognising that, wait a minute, I can't forgive my mother because she's not the problem. The problem is this diagram here is the, in the, um, the, what do you call it? The unconscious wish to be unfairly treated. So what I'm doing is I'm forgiving the ego's wish to be unfairly treated. So I always forgive myself and never forgive somebody or something out there. All right. And that's also, say, yeah. And that's, this? it's, it's the way for us to maintain the ego to maintain 
it's innocence, right? So the guilt is in the mind and that's untenable. So it projects it out. Yeah. Um, but because we feel guilty, we are anticipating and expecting punishment and we place it in our brothers, in our body, in the world, in so-called laws of nature, economic laws. The world is constantly unfairly treating us in you know, countless different ways. And so that really keeps this, the mythical me tap dancing, constantly defending against things that it, we ourselves have placed outside of ourselves, defending ourselves from real threats, pursuing real pleasures outside of ourselves apart from God. So as long as we're unfairly treated, you know, corinne has got a really great story to talk about and share with her brothers and pull them into her dream, right? Mm. So yes, it's an, as long as we're unfairly treated, we are the victim, we are innocent, and our brother is the guilty one or some something outside of ourselves is, the, is at fault, right? Absolutely. Thank you, sis. And one more point that just came in then yeah. was um, ego's forgiveness. Right? Oh. The, the way that the ego forgives is the first thing it does is it makes somebody wrong. And it could be somebody else. It also could be you, you know, like... <laughs> attacking yourself, self-judgment, right? Yeah. Which is just as mistaken as it is to judge somebody and blame somebody else, self-blame um, or blaming somebody else. Um, and so what it does is it makes the problem real. Mm -hmm. And then it says, I'm going to forgive it. Right. But what we don't usually recognize, it's the ego that tries to forgive it. And once we've made something real in our awareness, mm -hmm. in our belief, uh, as Jesus says in the course, it cannot be forgiven. It's impossible. It can't be forgiven. Once we make it real, um, then if it's real in the mind, it's a value. We value it. We have invested in its reality. Right. You cannot forgive something you've invested your reality in. It's impossible. It's going to come and bite you on the ass at some other place in time, right? It might not be, you may not connect it, but, you know, it might be from unforgiven grievances against your parents, you know, mm -hmm. and then it comes out 20, 30 years later as, as some kind of disease in your body. And, and you think they're totally unrelated. Right, right. Well, the sin, the, the ego wants us to believe in the reality of the separation. And then since it believes in the separation, yes. then it judges us as sinners and the punishment for sin is death. So mm -hmm. while we believe in the separation, all results or effects from the separation, we, we wear the badge of sinner and then the sinner must die. And so thank God for A Course in Miracles who comes around and says, wait a second, you guys, the separation has not occurred. What you think is outside of you is actually happening in your mind. All that we're doing, these are all false images that you're projecting from your mind. Bring them back into the mind. Realize that the separation has not occurred and that you were mistaken. When we can transmute a sin, what the ego says is a sin, into a mistake recognizing the unreality of what we th what we think we're seeing that is where holy spirit can then take the issue or the subject or the belief and through forgiveness of okay that's not true that's you know true denial we're going to go into a beautiful forgiveness process that nooks come uh, come up with uh, we take it through the forgiveness process and our perception that veil that we're looking at and relating to the world through becomes clearer as we remove all the as we allow holy spirit to forgive the beliefs that we've taken on since we believe we separated so that's a big one it's we're not it's not a sin it's a mistake and only when it's a mistake can it be forgiven if we move it into i've really done this that's a real problem that's the nifty way that the ego keeps forgiveness out of the reach of the holy spirit Mm. The text that well, I wished I'd had all of this 30 years ago when I began. You know? yeah. like, oh, Lord, I did not understand forgiveness. This, back the, then. 
if any of this is real, it cannot be forgiven. And all of this must be forgiven in order that with the Holy Spirit, we can have this. Okay. So while we're valuing or wanting that to be real, mm -hmm. it cannot be forgiven. But through forgiveness, hey, that's an image. It's happening from a split mind. I want my mind to be healed more than I want what's in the gap. This is our desire. This is what we will have. That's how powerful our mind is. Okay, so you choose. <laughs> yeah, right. How much right. of it, please? <laughs> yeah. Thank God, you know, thank God. So um, I have a, a very short forgiveness prayer. It's only one sentence, but shall I introduce it at the end or now? Why don't you do it at the end? Yeah, okay. And we've got a couple of links too, which we'll, we'll um, make sure uh, appear at the end of this video lesson. Perfect. Okay, so who's reading? You are. Is it me? If you want to. I think you should. All right. Lesson 46. God is the love in which I forgive. God does not forgive because he has never condemned. And there must be condemnation before forgiveness is necessary. Forgiveness is the great need of this world, and that is because it is a world of illusions. Those who forgive are thus releasing themselves from the world of illusions, while those who withhold forgiveness are binding themselves to it. As you condemn only yourself, so do you forgive only yourself. Although God does not forgive, his love is nevertheless the basis for forgiveness. Fear condemns and love forgives. Forgiveness thus undoes what fear has produced, returning the mind to the awareness of God. For this reason, forgiveness can truly be called salvation. It is the means by which illusions disappear. Today's exercises require at least three full five minute practice periods and as many shorter applications as possible. Begin the longer practice periods by repeating today's idea to yourself as usual. Close your eyes as you do so and spend a minute or two in searching your mind for those whom you have not forgiven. It does not matter how much you have not forgiven. You have forgiven them entirely or not at all. So you're either viewing somebody through the lens of fear or through love. If you are doing the exercises well, you should have no difficulty in finding a number of people you have not forgiven. I have to laugh about that one. What's that? I have to laugh on that one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, everybody I know is my bestie. Okay, it is a safe rule that anyone you do not like is a suitable subject. Mention each one by name saying, God is the love in which I forgive you, and then name the name. The purpose of the first phase of today's practice is to put you in a better position to forgive yourself. After you have applied the idea for today to all those who have come to mind, tell yourself, God is the love in which I forgive myself. That's really important because the ego would love to hijack and think it's part of the forgiveness process. But as we've talked about, the ego cannot forgive because it would make the wrong real to begin with. Then devote the remainder of the practice period to adding related ideas such as, God is the love with which I love myself. God is the love in which I am blessed. The form of these applications may vary considerably, but the central idea should not be lost sight of. You might say, for example, I cannot be guilty because I am a son of God. I have already been forgiven. No fear is possible in a mind beloved of God. There is no need to attack because love has forgiven me. The practice period should end, however, with a repetition of today's idea. As originally stated, God 
is the love in which I forgive. The shorter applications may consist of a repetition of the idea either in the original or in a related form as you prefer. Be sure, however, to make more specific applications if they are needed. They will be needed at any time during the day when you become aware of any kind of negative reaction to anyone, present or not. In this event, tell him silently, God is the love in which I forgive you. Lesson 46, God is the love in which I forgive. So we, we have a couple of, um, a couple of um, links, mm -hmm. I think there are two, that will appear at the end of this video. One of them is the seven essential principles of quantum forgiveness, which is incredibly valuable. So it takes you through the actual forgiveness process and it makes sense. You'll see when you, um, when you actually take yourself through it. Yeah. And then once, once you get used to, to that, there's a condensed prayer, which is one that I used for many years. And I'll just share that condensed prayer. It is at the, at the um, conclusion of the seven essential principles of quantum forgiveness, but I'll share it with you here. So whenever we're triggered, it doesn't matter by what or who, um, this is the prayer. It's very, very simple. Holy Spirit, please help me to forgive myself for having used fill in the blank it might be for having used my partner for having used sickness pain financial scarcity whatever it is to attack myself and to separate from you as my holy self amen it's a very very simple you can remember it and use it uh, to call upon holy spirit anytime you need it so it's holy spirit Please help me to forgive myself for having unknowingly used fill in the blank to attack myself right. and to separate from your love as my holy self. It's very, very easy. Amen. <laughs> okay. And um, I don't know if we decided to put in the blog post or not with this one, repurposing our triggers. Uh yeah, I, I think we can. It's it's a deep dive into triggers and um, I don't see why not. We might post it again later on, again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, there's uh, no um, necessity to read the blogs or listen. Some of them are audio, some of them are written. Uh, but if you feel inspired to yeah. go ahead and follow up with this um, supported material, then that's definitely a nudge from Holy Spirit. So go for it. Yeah. Right. But no right. guilt if you're not. That's, that's what I'm saying. Right. Don't no self-judgment. Yeah. That's yeah. So, so basically we're just asking Holy Spirit to forgive us for believing in something that isn't there, mm -hmm. is not happening, is not from God. We wanted it to be true. We believed in it for a while because it gave us a sense, it gave mythical me a sense of having an experience apart and away from God. So that's it. We just want to recognize we believe in something. The trigger is the sure sign we believe in something that isn't true because everything that's real is from God's love, loving will. So we're just going to forgive the imagery, the false perception, and ask Holy Spirit to return our perception, to heal our perception, to bring our mind back to wholeness, where we have vision, where we have peace and joy, and the sense, the remembrance of union. Okay. Beautiful. Okay. Yes. That's fantastic. So lesson 46, God is the love in which I forgive. And we will see you tomorrow for lesson 47. Right. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, sis. Bye. Bye.